Look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Look at this. We can't expect black men to express themselves, to feel seen, to share their emotions, and then call them sassy the second that they do. And here we go. Black men do not experience depression less than black women. Can you say that again? Just the way you said it. Black men do not experience depression less than black women. You smart. Let's be clear about that. What's happening is that black men are being ignored and misdiagnosed due to biases stacked against them. You're goddamn right. This is a form of violence, a violence that starts from birth. Oh shit, say it again. This is a form of violence, a violence that starts from birth. A violence that tells black men that they can't express their emotions. A violence that tells black men that their worth is tied only to what they can provide tangibly. Message! Not for who they are or how they feel. Black boys are reared to suppress their feelings. They are told to be strong, not to cry, to man up. And then when they become adults, we expect them to know how, how to identify and express their emotions. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life! This contradiction is not only harmful, it's deadly and it makes absolutely no sense. When we talk about the stress response, the trauma response, we often mention fight or flight, but we really talk about freeze response. The freeze response often includes numbing behaviors. These are behaviors that are attempts to escape from the reality that feels unbearable. This can be excessive substance use, which is often dismissed or stigmatized rather than understood as a symptom of deeper pain or worse, lionized as the best way to deal with your pain. Numbing behaviors like working and overworking, pushing themselves to exhaustion to avoid sitting with their reality. Hey, yeah, you might have just made a fact just now. That's some real shit. Or engaging in promiscuity, using it as a means to momentarily escape the weight of their emotions and also avoid being present. Damn. These unrealistic expectations and societal pressures are often what lead to these numbing behaviors. It's not that Black men experience depression less than others. It's that their depression is systemically ignored and misinterpreted. And it's time that we stop ignoring Black men's mental health. It's time that we listen and validate their experiences and dismantle these harmful narratives because Black men deserve to be seen. They deserve to be heard. They deserve to heal. And they deserve to grow old. So what can we do? That is an excellent question. Well, we can start with encouraging an open dialogue. We can create spaces where Black men can express their feelings without judgment, whether it's in the home that they reside in, the community that they reside in, or the work workplace. We can make it clear that emotions are valid and that expressing them is a sign of strength, not weakness. We can't expect Black men to express themselves, to feel seen, to share their emotions, and then call them sassy the second that they do. Absolutely fucking not. We can challenge stereotypes and harmful narratives and be mindful of how Black men are portrayed in media and in conversations and in daily interactions. And we can challenge stereotypes that depict Black men as emotionless, angry, or overly tough and replace them with narratives that reflect their hu full humanity. We do not hold media accountable as we should for the depictions of Black men in the way that they are seen. Can you say that again? Just the way you said it. We do not hold media accountable as we should for the depictions of Black men in the way that they are seen. Message! I also think we need to do a better job of encouraging Black men to explore and engage in healthy coping strategies like mindfulness or meditation or creative expression or physical activity um, and recognize and validate these practices as, as essential to their well-being and mental health. One of the biggest issues is that Black men are reared in this, this thought process that they are only what they can provide. And if it does not contribute to the bills, if it does not contribute to the house, then it doesn't matter because it doesn't contribute to you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And we as a community have to sever that narrative. We need to let Black men and Black boys know that you are not only what you can provide tangibly. It is also about pouring into yourself. That's a fact. Hobbies are important. And letting them know that they deserve that. I would also say that one of the most important things to do is do not fall prey to the gender wars. Do not fall prey to the gender wars. Do not fall prey to the gender wars. You're goddamn right. 
is most of the time it's just simply clickbait. I don't even believe that half the people believe what they're putting out there, but they have plugged into the fact that it is something that will get them clicks and likes and give them the attention that they so sorely need and desire. So I know it's easy to think that there's this aspect of black men against black women, but as someone who is actively a womanist, I believe that what's best for black men is what's best for the black community. What's best for black women is best for the black community and what's best for non-binary black folk is best for the black community. Don't fall prey to these gender wars because as quiet as it's kept, and I hope it gets louder, we are a community and we are more for each other than against each other. This motherfucker don't miss. Goodbye. Let me know if this video was a hit or miss. Leave your comments down below. Also remember to hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. I'll see you guys on the next one.